Hey guys, Bitcoin is back in the news. As it's approaching its all-time high of nearly 20,000 US dollars from back in 2017, Bitcoin supporters boast that it is one of the most secure and unconfiscable currencies in the world. It is virtually unhackable for classical computers. But what about quantum computers? The year is 2008. Nearly a decade of cheap borrowing rates and excessive money printing from the Federal Reserve fueled the greed of bankers and caused them to take on highly overleveraged positions in the subprime mortgage market. Financial firms and hedge funds owned more than a trillion dollars in securities backed by the failing subprime mortgages. Finally, in September 2008, the bubble burst when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt and caused a global ripple effect. Millions of people lost their jobs, homes, and way of life. The global economy took a nosedive, and the S&P 500 fell more than 50%. It was under these circumstances that a group of crypto anarchists started talking about a decentralized cryptocurrency that could not be controlled and printed by any government. Money from the people for the people. In October 2008, a group or individual under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto published a paper on a cryptography mailing list under the title Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Satoshi's ingenious white paper solved the infamous double spending problem by introducing the blockchain and proof of work. The double spending problem arises in digital currencies that are not controlled by a central authority. How do you make sure that no one spends their balance more than once when you have no bank checking all transactions? Satoshi's ingenious idea was to introduce miners in the system that have to spend a lot of energy to solve a cryptographic puzzle. And once they get it right, they can confirm transactions and receive Bitcoin in return which is called proof of work. The system works as long as more than 50% of all miners are honest. The system makes sure that if a miner includes wrong transactions and his block is thus not included in the blockchain, he has wasted all the energy and money that went into solving the cryptographic puzzle. Miners are therefore only profitable if they include valid transactions. Mining today is done in large-scale mining farms with thousands of miners that use a specific hardware that is built for solving the cryptographic puzzle. If you own Bitcoin, it actually means that you own a private key to an address. The private key is a string of random numbers and letters that are used to sign transactions. If you pass the private key through a hash function, this creates the public key, which is used to verify that you own the private key to your address. Passing the public key through another hash function twice finally generates the address. Hash functions are a very special kind of function. If you change the input ever so slightly, it completely changes the output. If you want to know the input from the output, there is no efficient way of figuring this out other than checking all possibilities. Bitcoin's keys are 256 bits long, so that's 2 to the power 256 different combinations, which is a bit less than the number of atoms in the universe, so a stupidly large number. So to summarize, if you guys wanted to hypothetically donate some Bitcoin to my address, which is in the description by the way, you would use your private key to sign the transaction and broadcast it into the network. The transaction is then verified by the miners using your public key and added to the blockchain. If you lose your private keys, your Bitcoins are gone forever since there is no way of spending them. Or are they? Now this is where the quantum computer comes in. Bitcoin uses elliptic curve cryptography for its public private key encryption. And it turns out that this is broken by one of the most famous quantum algorithms, Shor's prime factoring algorithm. 
Peter Shor published his famous paper back in 1994, when quantum computing was essentially just a crazy dream. Fast forward to today, IBM has successfully run Shor's algorithm on one of their devices in 2019. They used his algorithm to find the primes that make up the number 35, which is 5 and 7. You can imagine that this problem becomes extremely difficult for large numbers, but not for a quantum computer. Part of this algorithm can be used to break the elliptic curve encryption. Alright, now whose Bitcoin are we gonna steal? It is estimated that the public keys for around 20 to 30% of Bitcoins are known. This is Bitcoin's major weak point. In particular, the public key from the 1.1 million Bitcoins that was mined by Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi's Bitcoin has not been moved since 2009 and is around 5% of the total Bitcoin supply. Stealing the Bitcoins from its inventor would not only make you ridiculously rich, it would also cause the price to completely collapse and destroy the trust that people have in the network. Researchers estimate that for breaking the elliptic curve cryptography that Bitcoin is using, we need around 2,334 logical qubits. Logical qubits are perfect qubits without any errors, not the noisy error-prone ones that we have today. So we're going to need an error correction code that corrects the errors. The most popular error correction code today is the surface code, which uses multiple physical qubits to encode one logical qubit. I found a paper from back in 2017 that estimates, given the current progress in hardware, quantum computers will be able to break the encryption before 2030. This relies on three assumptions. The number of qubits roughly doubles, the errors half, and the gate frequency doubles every year. Using these extremely optimistic estimates, the encryption could be broken in under 10 minutes in the year 2027. Since 2017, we've got more data points and it looks to me like we're on the slower side of progress. According to IBM's roadmap, they will have a 1000 qubit machine by 2023. So I'd say the best case estimate at the current progress puts us somewhere in the 2030s. Only time will tell. So far, we're at around 73 qubits and running error correction codes on current devices is only at the very, very early stage of research. Nevertheless, at some point in the future, quantum computers will most likely be able to crack the encryption and we should start thinking about quantum safe encryption schemes. This is why the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST in short, has started looking into the best quantum safe encryption algorithms. NIST plans to release the initial standard for quantum resistant cryptography in 2022. To be safe from quantum attacks, the Bitcoin network will then have to upgrade to the new encryption algorithms. This is not so straightforward since the Bitcoin network is decentralized. Most likely, a good chunk of the network will keep using the old encryption and remain vulnerable to attacks from quantum computers. So what do you think? Is this all just pure speculation? Or are quantum computers really going to be able to crack Bitcoin's encryption in just a decade? Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe for more quantum computing content. Also guys, I'll be sharing an exciting new project in the coming weeks, so stay tuned.